So I made a post a couple weeks ago when I got this thing, and I was like, guess what it is, and you'll be featured in the next video. So, to follow up on that promise, we ended up with a couple people, and let's just say nobody guessed it until I started giving out some very obvious hints. Here's the first one, and here are the others. So yeah, it is a 3D printer, I paid $78 for it, and it's pretty damn tiny. So with that said, let's go ahead and unbox it, set it up, test it out, and see if we can print any useful PSP accessories with it. So, here we go. For starters, we got a 12 volt 2 amp adapter, some cheap white starter filament, what seems like a guide on how to level, calibrate, slice, and print your parts, a handy dandy user manual, with some included videos, manuals, and software inside the SD card, and it's a pretty straightforward thing, it's got some colored pictures, lots of labels, and this should be pretty handy. And finally for accessories, we got a cheap Phillips screwdriver, and for some reason, two SD card readers. Who knows, maybe these things are so cheap that it was cheaper to actually provide you with two instead of including a better one. And it claims that the 3D printer can only go up to 8 gigabytes. And finally, here we have the ultra high quality 4 gigabyte micro SD card. It doesn't get any better than this. Now as for the printer, it comes a little bundle like this. The actual parts are even smaller. It's kind of ridiculous how small it is. I mean, yeah, this right here is the print bed. Pretty tiny. But hey, let's see what we can do with it. So here's a closer look at everything. We got the print bed. It is a 100 by 100 by 100, and it comes with a magnetic detachable print surface. Hopefully it works pretty well because this thing is not heated. It's just a piece of plastic that is held down by some screws, some springs that you'll have to adjust to actually level and calibrate your printer. The servo motor is built in, is pre-attached, and all you have to do is simply twist this into the different components, plug in your wires, and you're pretty much good to go. So nothing crazy here. Here's a spool holder and some kind of bracket. The other two axes, again, with built-in servos, all ready to go. And all you have to do is pretty much twist them into place to actually attach them. And finally, we have the feeder, the heater, and the computer. Here it says that it requires 12 volt at 2.5 amps. Well, we got a 2 amp adapter, but it should be perfectly fine. But when we take a look at the actual heater, it says 2 amps. It doesn't matter. Here we have a little window for the actual feeder. So our filament will go in from here. A little ventilation for everything. A tiny little fan. Here we have the tiny nozzle at 0.4 millimeters all enclosed in a nice braided mesh. Here we have our cheap controls, which seems like retract, feed, one, two, three, four, and I guess a start button. And finally, we have our three servos that will just simply attach right into these little connectors and everything should just work, right? So here is the assembly process. You ready for it? I'm not even gonna use the manual. I mean, maybe I should. Do I? Nah. So we're gonna take our base and we're gonna try to twist it into place here. That should be it. And then we have our little bracket, which should just snap into place. There we go. Let's unravel this print head. Now let's push this aside. Oh, don't tell me. Slap that on top. Slide this in. This is not sturdy at all. And then this thing should just snap like that. Not too sure where this goes, but I'm going to assume that it just clips on top of this thing. Yep. That's our spool holder. I think I put it the wrong way. This is so flimsy. That should go here with the longest cable, go into the furthest thing, X axis, and finally the Z axis. And there we have it. The cheapest 3D printer, which looks like a really cheap toy, which it kind of is. So what now? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, figure out how to use it, do some test prints, and once I'm done, <laughs> we'll be back to find some 3D models to print, check them out, review them, Give you my final thoughts with whatever tips that I can come up with if you end up getting this thing. And yeah, should be pretty straightforward, right? Well, I don't know. Future me is going to deal with it. So, see you guys on the other side. All right, so we're back. It's been a couple months. I printed several things, really got to know this printer, and pretty much tried all the features it has to offer. So here's how things went and what I think about it. And I think it's best to start with the actual printing experience, which is both good and bad. Setting aside print quality, which we'll get to in just a bit, being able to print through Type-C is kind of awesome. It's a tiny printer, you can move it around, you can plug into a plethora of Type-C adapters, your power bank, your phone adapter, so long it supports 12 volt and up, and you can start printing with its tiny build plate, which is exactly how I've used it. And although it doesn't have a file selector, where you can pick and choose what file you want to print, the whole process is pretty straightforward. Despite having a lack of an LCD screen to control things, this very limited set of controls is actually quite functional. First off, how the printer decides what file to print is based on the last saved file. So whatever you copy in last, will be the file that the printer picks. To level your printer, you got these four buttons, one for each of these corners in order to level them with the good old screw knob method. And you're looking at it from the side, you'll notice that it doesn't look right at all, but that's how it is from factory. I've looked at other reviews and I'm not the only one. Yeah, and you could probably tell that it's not perfectly flat, but the build plate being so small, it slightly mitigates some of these issues. 
but to be honest, the build plate not being perfectly flat is the least of your concerns. Most of the time, I just love how portable it is, plug into a Type-C adapter if you really want your power bank, and basically, the moment you plug it in and turn it on, the fan starts spinning, then you can go ahead and do your leveling, so I'll go ahead and press, for example, 1. And since there's a lack of sensors on each of the axes, when it wants to go ahead and calibrate itself, it just moves the print head long enough, so no matter where it is on the axis, it eventually gets to where it needs. And as a result, you'll hear some really rough grounding noises of the stepper motor once it reaches to one end, as it's constantly pushing, even though it already reached the end. So I go ahead and press 2, it's going to go to number 2, and vice versa. Then we have these two buttons for retracting and feeding. So if we go ahead and press feed, this thing is going to start flashing. And once it's ready, the feeder will engage and it will start spewing out all the filament. And the light, of course, will start pulsating at a slower pace. Now to stop it, you just press it again, just like that. And if you want to retract, you press that and it will go through the exact same process. The stepper motor will reverse and this thing will start pulling out. Finally, when you actually go ahead and start printing, surprisingly, it does in fact have a pause function by simply pressing this once more during the print. Once it finishes the layer that it's working on, it will go up, move to the top left corner, and then you can go ahead and change out your filament or whatnot. Now despite the print quality, my biggest problem with this thing is actually the lack of a proper spool holder. And although it comes with one that attaches like so, well guess what? These one kilogram rolls don't work on it. As it's made for I think 400 or 600 gram ones, which are not very standard and they're very hard to get in most cases. Not to mention that the spool itself is heavier than the printer which is something that you can't always say. And while I was checking the included files, I found this little holder right here, which ended up being my first test print using the included filament. So I went ahead and printed it out. And that's when I also figured out that, right, uh, physics. So just to get by on one weekend, I would basically just cut a long enough roll that I need and just kind of let it dangle like this. And yes, it was pretty wasteful, but eventually I ended up getting this $5 spool holder, which was kind of annoying to set up as it's not very easy to move around. But once I got it, it was pretty much smooth sailing. So in the end, that's what I ended up using, which I think should be included in the package. For reference, here's the film that I've been using. It's pretty cheap, standard stuff, which should be good enough for this printer. And now we can finally take a look at the print result. Looking at this, it's kind of a miracle we have anything at all here. But let's quickly go over them and show you what kind of results you can expect. Now the only other ready-to-use file that is included, other than the spool holder, is this little rocket. And things turned out pretty decent. Of course, being one of the first prints, the printer is not worn out. And um, honestly, not too bad for what it is. And being in a white color, it hides a lot of defect. It was most likely done in a vase mode. And before I moved on to my gray filament, I printed a PSP Slim battery door. And uh, by default, the preset comes included with a raft, which is quite annoying. And I could be mistaken, it could be just a brim layer. But what that is, is a layer that is printed right before the actual print that is meant to secure the print and be easily removable once it's all done. Except the printer being not very accurate, it ended up being permanently attached to the actual print. Now you'll notice that it has a grainy texture here, and here's a better view of what that looks like. And that's coming from the detachable magnetic print surface, which although is very nice, is actually very annoying, and I highly recommend that you don't actually print directly to it. Instead, that you go ahead and use some masking tape to cover your surface like so before you start printing. Get it perfectly flat, don't get the seams overlapping, and this will save you a whole lot of headache because it will stop you from damaging the actual print surface, not have to deal with the filament getting in between the crevices, and usually it won't easily come out without the use of a needle, and it's going to make the whole entire print process a whole lot easier. And using PLA filament does surprisingly work pretty well with this surface, despite having no heated bed. So if you end up getting this, hopefully for a really good price, make sure you use some masking tape, as it will eventually damage the surface if you print directly to it and you try to clean it up. So other than that, we printed it with no support. That's why we have this uneven surface, as it does have some overhang. But the result, it does look pretty all right, but it's not very all right. And that's because the printer tends to print things slightly bigger than they're supposed to be. Which of course is something you can definitely configure inside the actual slicer software. Does it work? Yeah. Is it perfect? No. Can you fix it? Sorta. That's when I ended up printing another one, this time around on the masking tape. That's why we have this type of texture here. No supports, no raft, no brim. And it printed ever so slightly better. But it still had the fitment problems. And for that I went ahead and heated it with a hairdryer, installed a battery, and just pushed it into place until it was relatively flat. As a temporary solution, you could make it work, but it's not perfect. Definitely don't recommend this printer for anything that is uh, critical like this. Then we moved on to another PSP part, which is something I've been wanting to print for several years now, and that is a dummy UMD disk that can hold multiple memory cards, which in use should look cool something like this. But of course, since the print quality is pretty bad, not only the memory cards don't sit right, it also doesn't sit right inside the UMD slot. Now, can I fix this print? Of course I can. I can heat it, slice it, sand it, 
and make it fit better. But of course, that's not the point of this video. So moving on with the other related PSB stuff, I tried to print some analog sticks. And as you can see, they didn't turn out well at all. It's horrendous, it doesn't work, it's pretty bad. Then someone on the Discord server was like, I'd be pretty impressed if this thing can even print a Benchy. And I was like, you're right, let's do that. First print didn't turn out well at all. And I know people are sick of seeing Benchies, but here we are. It started out pretty well, but things went real downhill real quick. And that was actually because initially when I was trying to print things, I didn't have my spool holder and the filament was getting stuck. It was yanking and it was pulling the entire printer as it's printing because the printer is lighter than the actual filament. So it failed. Then I ended up with another failed print. But once we solved that, we had our first proper Benchy. And honestly, it's pretty impressive for what this printer can do. No supports whatsoever, other than the raft, which was not easily removed. It actually has some decent detail. The only problem is consistency. In some places, it actually prints pretty well, but in other areas, it's patchy, it's weird, and things kind of shift side to side, which as you can tell right here. Overall, for a printer that runs on Type-C, not bad at all if you ask me. Pretty impressive. But if only it wasn't held together with twist clips which we'll talk about in just a bit. Then I went ahead and printed this XYZ cubes. Again, not the best print to test things out with, but it does give us an idea of how things are going. The biggest problem, in my opinion, with this printer is the three axes not being properly secured. And that's why we're getting a lot of shifting in these prints. If they could solve that, this would be a pretty awesome little printer, to be honest. Then I tried to print a nuclear reactor from the game Red Alert 2, which again failed because I didn't have the spool holder and the filament got tangled up. But again, you can see the texture on the back here from all the tape. These are the default settings that you get with the preset. I just kind of tweaked it ever so slightly, turned off any support layers, and if you're interested, the preset will be in the description down below. So the infill here, I think it was 25%, and it's the type of support that kind of twists together in kind of a hex spiral. Another failed attempt on the third print, but eventually we got it to print, but it kind of looks like it was infected with fungus, or the whole thing is kind of rusting, but that's that. Then I decided to test out the layer height at 100 millimeters, and for that I used my favorite spaceship model and printed it in base mode, where the printer does not stop, or at least tries not to, and basically it just keeps going all the way until it gets to the top, which on a proper printer would give us nice even results. But in the case of this printer, we know that it's inconsistent, the layers kind of shift, and I uh, may have bumped the printer ever so slightly right over here. Of course, once it got to the top, this little point right here is actually supposed to be a little ball, but instead we got a sad little stick. Honestly, not too bad, just kind of squint, put it far away, and you'll think that it's a pretty decent model. Then I moved on to printing my favorite PSB stand. It's very simple, very basic, straightforward. It happens to be exactly 100 millimeters, which allows us to test out the full range side to side, and it turned out pretty horrible. That being said, I'll be using these for my sacrificial PSBs, and the only good thing I can say about this print is that it's functional. And honestly, that's all I'm looking for. It's warped around the edges, which I can always fix, sand, or heat up with a hairdryer and just warp it into place, but all I cared about was a functional PSB stand that I could use for my sacrificial PSB collection when I'm doing some of these modding videos. And this is what it should look like, at least on a decent printer, which was done on my Creality CR10, I believe sometime in 2018. And it's my favorite PSB stand because it's so small, compact, looks pretty good with and without a PSB on it, because a lot of stands out there look pretty ugly when you have nothing on it. So that's side by side of what it should look like with a decent printer, and that's what it should look like. A little something like this. And finally, I decided to print something very challenging with this printer, trying to max out the entire print surface and printing something that you really shouldn't attempt. But I did. And that would be a little lizard dragon thingy where the joints here are meant to actually move freely if this was a big enough print surface on a proper printer. But in this case, it's all calcified and you can see why. But honestly, looking at the details, it does look pretty cool. Yes, the print quality isn't perfect, but it kind of adds to the charm. Since this is meant to be a skeleton, you can kind of feel like it was deteriorated or not. And it would definitely make for a cool art piece to put on your office desk. But I almost forgot there was actually one last thing I tried to print and that would be a vertical Type-C bracket for an upcoming video. I tried to print several different models. They all were pretty horrible. I tried to make one work by heating it, flexing it, installing a Type-C point into it, sanding it, painting it, you name it. I've done a bunch of things just to make it feel somewhat right. But that's about it. I don't know where I put the other pieces. So after all that, I decided to do some stress testing and at the same time, print something that I need more of. And that would be, of course, the stand right here. So I went ahead and printed 11 more. They are now being used on the modded collection right here. And after I'm done, I'm just gonna keep printing more until I deplete this entire roll. Then I can finally retire this printer. And with that, we can go ahead and give you my final thoughts and conclude this video. So, this thing would be worth its price for $75 if the print quality was at least 50% to 100% better. And that can only be done if they can find a way to secure all these components 
and remove this crazy amount of wiggle on all of the axes. It's crazy how much this thing wiggles across every component. You can even see it while printing. Every time the bed moves, you can see it tilt back and forth. And that's the core reason why the print quality is so horrible and inconsistent. Not only that, but of course the print surface is not flat. It's not heated. This bottom part is also not flat, so you'll find me putting some mounting putty or some kind of shim just to stop it from wiggling while it's printing. But you get the idea, if they could just make this into an all metal build that can be actually tightened and not held with simple plastic clips, I think this would make for a pretty fantastic printer. But if the print quality was actually good enough, it would be a lifesaver. It would be an amazing piece of tech to have around if you happen to be a DIY creator traveling across the country. Perhaps something breaks or you need something last minute and you're in your hotel room, you can just go ahead and design it, print it on the spot and be good to go. It would truly be a pretty awesome piece of tech and I'm sure you can go ahead and modify it but if you're just buying this as a regular user, you probably don't want to be messing around with this thing too much and wasting your time trying to make it better, especially at the price point of $75. At its current price range, I would think it would be more suitable around $50. It's right now on sale for around $68. You can get it with coupons. With $50, you can look at this thing as a toy it would definitely make for a fun little gift for someone who wants to get into 3D printing, but they're not sure if they're going to like it. In my opinion, the instructions are pretty straightforward, where you can pick it up and quickly get started with it. And there's something I just found out. You can actually open it like so, and that's pretty nice. Let's do some maintenance real quick. If anything gets jammed, you can take a look at the internals and see what's going on. And with that being said, that is all for this video. I would only recommend this if you can get it at a really good price point, while keeping in mind that it's more of a toy than an actual professional tool. It's definitely a fun toy, considering they can go ahead and take it apart without any tools and put all it back together. And the fact that you can run on Type-C is pretty awesome. Anyways, that is all for this video. If you're interested, I'll leave links for it in the description down below. And if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go ahead and print myself all the stands that I could until this entire filament is done. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.